converting units. All right, so our objective today is to be able to convert from one unit to another unit of the same type. So um, let's start with an overall example for this process. Now this is a problem you can do in your head and uh, that's one reason why we're using it. So um, we all know that one yard is equal to three feet. And it turns out that that's actually an equality and it can also be made into a conversion factor. And so we can, we can calculate this, um, you know, how many feet there are in three yards more formally if we use a conversion factor to do it. Um, now, of course, we, we can all do it in our heads, so we know we're going to end up with nine feet. But the interesting part is, so here's our three yards, and now we have three feet is equal to one yard, and we're going to get an answer. Now, what I want you to notice down here at the bottom is that three yards, because yards is on the bottom in your conversion factor, those units are gonna cancel out. So basically what you have here is three divided by one, which is three, times three feet. So there's a unit that's still hanging around. And so our final answer is gonna be nine feet. So we got rid of yards, and we ended up with feet. So this is basically the process we're gonna discuss in this entire presentation. Now, um, as I mentioned, this is called an equality. So you can do anything you want to this as long as you do it to both sides. So for instance, let's go ahead and divide both sides by two, and we end up with one half yard is equal to one and a half feet. That's still an equality. We know that that's also still true. Now, what if you uh, divide both sides by a number and a unit, okay? So we have one yard is equal to three feet. Let's go ahead and uh, divide both sides by one yard. And so one yard divided by one yard is equal to one. Three feet divided by one yard. That is our conversion factor that we just used. So three yards divided by one yard gets rid of the yards multiplied by three feet gives us nine feet. Now, just one really important note, conversion factors are considered exact, so they are not counted when determining significant figures. So, uh, so in this case, it, you know, all of them have one, but this would be one sig fig, one sig fig, but it doesn't matter what these numbers are. They, they are in the equality and they don't count towards significant figures because they are considered exact numbers. Okay, so let's look at another example, something a little less familiar. So let's think about a millimeter. Now a millimeter is one one thousandth of a meter. So we are going to write down that definition right here. One millimeter is one one thousandth of a meter. Now we can also write this where we have a thousand millimeters, so lots of the little thing being equal to the big thing. Okay, little thing equal to one divided by a big number. Okay, is another little thing. or Lots of little things equal to one big thing, okay? Now, let's go ahead and divide both sides by one meter. So let's use the thousand millimeters equal to one meter. We're gonna divide by one meter. We're gonna end up with one on this side because one meter divided by one meter is one. And we're gonna have 1,000 millimeters over one meter. Now, let's convert five meters into millimeters. So we're gonna use this conversion factor. Now notice, this conversion factor has the unit we want to get rid of, which is meters, on the bottom, and it has the unit that we want to convert into on the top. That's going to be something, a concept, that you're going to be using a whole bunch when we talk about uh, moles and mole ratios. You're going to be using this, so, so definitely take some time to get familiar with this right now. So 5.5 meters is going to be canceled out by the 1 meter. So 5.5 divided by 1. Now we have a unitless number. Now we're going to multiply it by 1,000 millimeters. So now we have a unit back. And we have 5,500 millimeters. If we write it in scientific notation, it makes it really obvious that we have two significant figures in our answer, just like we started with. All right, so let's do a different conversion. This time we're gonna go from millimeters to meters. And we have the same two definitions. 
And this time we're going to choose the one that um, that has uh, that has thousand millimeters equal to one meter. Okay, and we are going to divide by thousand milliliters on millimeters on both sides. Okay, and um, and this side is equal to one. And here's our conversion factor. There should be one more m there. That should be millimeters, not meters. So 1,000 millimeters divided by 1,000 millimeters is equal to one meter divided by 1,000 millimeters. Okay, and that's just saying that there's 1,000 millimeters in one meter. Okay, so let's use this as a con conversion factor again. So we have 5,500 millimeters. We're going to divide it by 1,000 now, and that gets rid of our millimeter unit. So if 5,500 divided by 1,000 times one meter. So now we get our unit back and we end up with 5.5 meters. Again, notice we start off with two significant figures. These are placeholder zeros. We end up with two significant figures in our answer. All right, so how do we know which conversion factor to use? That is the whole issue right there. And again, you're gonna use this concept throughout this course. So it's a really good thing to get down right now. And basically, the conversion factor you're going to use is going to depend on what unit you want to get rid of in your initial quantity. Okay? So if you want to get rid of millimeters, if you want to get rid of meters. Okay? So same thing here. This should be uh, millimeters here. So 1,000 millimeters. So if our original unit of our quantity is meters and we want to convert to millimeters, then what we're going to do is choose this conversion factor because we're starting off with meters. It's going to be in the numerator. It's going to be canceled out because this is in the denominator. And then our millimeters is in the numerator. And then we're going to end up with millimeters as our final answer. So, um, and so this basically is just stating, so our original unit is assumed to be in the numerator. To get rid of it, we want the meter unit in the denominator. So what we want to get rid of, we want that in the denominator so it will cancel. All right, let's do a little bit more practice. We're going to convert 35.9 kiloliters to liters. So what's our equality? We know kilo is 1,000. So one kiloliter is 1,000 liters. We can, revite, we can write the conversion factor two ways. So either one kiloliter over 1,000 liters or 1,000 liters over one kiloliter. And now we're going to choose the conversion factor and calculate the answer. So we're starting with kiloliters. We want the conversion factor that has kiloliters on the bottom, so it'll cancel out. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Okay, so 35.9 divided by 1, which gives us 35.9, times 1,000 is equal to, uh, looks like 35,900 liters. That's a lot of liters. And notice that we have three sig figs that we're starting with, and we're going to end with three sig figs, and these guys are both placeholder zeros. All right, another example. Let's go ahead and go from microliters to liters, okay? So we have one liter, and that's a big thing, and here's a whole bunch of small things. So remember, one liter is equal to one times 10 to the six microliters. We can, we can write the conversion factor, again, two different ways. One liter over one times 10 to the six microliters, or the other way around. Now, we want to convert from microliters to liters, so we want to use the conversion factor that has microliters on the bottom. So 67.08 microliters, um, that gets rid of the micro, microliter unit, where we end up with liter unit, and we end up with 6.708 times 10 to the negative 5 liters as our answer. And again, notice our original quantity and our answer both have the same number of significant figures, which is 4. So there's another sandwich zero that we have to count. All right, so just to summarize, units can be converted to other units if we use the proper conversion factors. Uh, we basically create those conversion factors from equalities that relate two different units. Uh, we can have single step or multi-step conversions. So we only did single step in this presentation, but you can do multi-step also. Um, and unit conversion is a very powerful mathematical technique in chemistry. You have to master it. The other name for unit conversion is, is dimensional analysis. 
So if you see that, that's the same thing as unit conversion. And then finally, exact numbers do not affect the determination of sig figs. So those, those exact numbers in the equality don't count when you're uh, looking at sig figs.